Hi there and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you uh, several different techniques we can use to kill a process, kill an EXE that's running, kill an application that's running. Why do we need this? This is something we shouldn't need typically, okay? This is not the approach to be used normally. This is something you're using when the normal approaches don't work, when programs don't shut down as they should. In the past, there were some issues with access where uh, you close access, and yet the msaccess.exe would continue to appear in your task manager. And sometimes figuring out why that was happening, is it a bug? Is it your code that's at fault? Anyway, it became necessary to find a technique to simply kill it. Kill it outright from the uh, task manager, make it shut down. And we've seen a little bit of a resurgence of that recently. I posted regarding a bug with the web browser control, the modern web browser control in Access once again. And I've noticed that it seems to create instances in the task manager of the web view too. And even after I'd close access, some of these instances would remain. The MS Access EXE wouldn't necessarily always shut down properly. And I was left with hanging MS Access EXE. I also saw th th this week a post on UA where someone else is having similar problem. And some of the other MVPs have even said that, you know, they've experienced it. It's not something that you're seeing everywhere. But it does happen and it happens beyond access you know i keep saying access here but this is a problem that can impact any program any program can remain hung and in your task management and not actually close down properly and then you get into problems where it's locking a file and you can't release it you can't reload you know there's all sorts of headaches that come along with that so it becomes necessary to find a way to kill it. Now, obviously you can go into your task manager, find the process, right click and process, confirm, yeah, yeah. But what if we wanna do this through automation? What if we wanna ask whatever the program is to close nicely, you know, to quit, to close. And then we check, is it still running? And if it is, well, then we're gonna take this approach to forcibly close it. So what I'm gonna to present to you today are four different approaches. And I have a, an article, let me bring it into view here so you can see. I have an article here that uh, illustrates the four techniques I'm going to now show you through my demo. So we're going to cover briefly how it can be done using Shell, how it can be done doing WMI, how it can be done with an API, or should I say a set of APIs, and lastly, even how it can be done through PowerShell. And we've already covered the final word about using this. So let's just dive in. This is really simple, uh, not complex at all. So how is it done? Let's start off with first and foremost, the shell approach. So the beauty of shell is it's baked into uh, VBA. And basically the way it works is we create a command and we use the shell to execute that command. It's very simple. Now here at the top and on the website as well, I give you three different tools you can use directly in DOS. So let me just demonstrate to you DOS. Let me bring up the command prompt window. Let me bring it into focus here so you can see it. But as you can see here, if we just want to view the list of existing tasks, instead of going through the task manager, you can use task list in the command prompt and you'll get a listing here of all of the tasks. If you want to order it, you can do a pipe and then do sort, and then at least it gets ordered alphabetically. The next thing here where I'm not going to use today is you can use task kill to kill a specific process ID if you know the PID of the process. In our case, we're going to go a different route. We're going to kill it by process name. So in the case of Microsoft Access, it would be msaccess.exe. For Excel, it's excel.exe. Explore, explore.exe. Um, calculator, calculator.exe. Calculator app. You get the idea, okay? So it's very simple to use. And here below is the final version on the website. So basically we have a function that we're going to pass it a name of a process that we want to terminate. And it is going to use the shell to run that task kill 
and go and find that and terminate the process that we've specified. So as I show here, if we wanted to terminate Excel, well then we'd simply do that shell kill process and then in quotes we put excel.exe. And when you run it, it will automatically close it. And the thing to note here with any of these approaches, we're closing it by name, not by PID, not by instance specifically. So if you have three open Excel workbooks going, all three will be shut down and closed, and they're closed forcefully. You're not asked and prompt to save anything. They're just going to close. So you have to use this with caution here, but it works perfectly. I also just uh, put here a little quick uh, code that I put together of how you can even use the task list and you can go and push it to the clipboard. Then you could retrieve from the clipboard very easily. You can do it through VBA or you can do it uh, in any application, your text editor or whatever. It will be there. The information will be there for you to utilize. E, going back to the shell kill process, uh, down below I also have shown here two variations on the above sample. What's the variation? Well, it's just simply that I'm adding a timeout. So I'm adding a pause before it goes and kills the process. So if ever you wanted to permit certain actions to take place, you wanted to try and close things nicely first, whatever you're trying to achieve, well this is how you can go about doing a timeout and you use the slash t with the amount of time in seconds you want the delay so in both examples here i'm doing a five second delay before moving on to doing the killing of the task itself if you use the command slash k well then you have to also include exit to close down that instance if you use the command and you're using the slash c then you don't need the exit so just quite simply, a couple options here, but basically this guy here does everything we need and will terminate any process you have or need to close. The second one I thought we'd look at is WMI. Now WMI is one of these wonderful tools that's available to us that has access to almost everything in Windows. So it makes it a very powerful tool. The downside to WMI is that although yes it's powerful and yes it's capable of doing pretty much anything to a computer it's slower we're going to be here as you can see using the get object create object things like that we're now going and querying things uh, to identify processes so it's just a slower thing it's a slower approach it works equally well there's no issue there but it's going to be slower than say using the shell or using the API. But it's basically the same general idea. I'm gonna go through it, I'm gonna find the process, find if it matches up, and then it's gonna terminate that process. Obviously, if there's multiple instances of the process name that you ask for, excel.exe for instance, it will close all of those instances. So once again, it's indiscriminate and just will terminate every single instance that is running without asking you to save anything once again. So effective, yes. A little slower, yes. But it works beautifully. Um, moving on to the third approach. This was one I came across a long time ago on Utter Access and Brett Spaulding. And it uses a series of APIs, as you can see here. And the code is, it's intense, uh, not something you're just going to come up with. But luckily for us, he came up with it or came across it himself and was kind enough to share. This approach works beautifully as well and works in the same manner. You're going to use kill process and then you do the uh, excel.exe or whatever the name. You just press enter and it will go and kill all the instances of that process name so it works and it works quick it just like shell it's a quick approach and when i say wmi is slow we're not talking it takes you know it's not going to take five seconds to act or what it's still lickety split but if you were to measure the performance let's say milliseconds or something there still is a noticeable difference between api shell and wmi or and powershell I'm not a huge proponent of APIs. Um, having all of these to declare 
Um, and then you get into business considerations and things like that. I much prefer to stick with something that's universal, such as Shell, such as WMI, such as PowerShell, which is our next subject. PowerShell is the replacement for VBScript pretty much. Whether we like it or not, this is where Microsoft wants everyone to be going. Um, so it obviously makes sense that it would offer the capability to terminate and get information and whatnot about processes. So yes, we can use it to terminate processes through VBA as well. Now, for this to work, you're going to need my PS underscore execute function uh, from my website. I just copy paste it and now you're able to run any PowerShell command you want through VBA. So this guy here has what is required to be able to uh, create a shell and push out the command that we're going to give it. So this is just a wrapper that does all the heavier liftings and we can actually run PowerShell commands. So we don't need to worry and do this every single time. We're just going to call it. So this now becomes very similar to the shell approach where we're going to have a function that we simply push a command to. And this is the command we're going to be pushing right here. Now above it, once again, I'm giving you a couple examples. And it's the same general idea as this shell approach. I show you here how you can use the get process to go get a full listing of active processes if that's something you want. I show you here how you could technically terminate something by PID if you know the PID. Or the last one is the one we're focusing on right now is how we can terminate a process by name, similarly to every other example we've looked at. So here it is implemented and here is the exact same command as above. But now we're passing it the process name, which is an input argument. So it becomes the exact same implementation as every other uh, function we've seen. So to stop Excel, we would simply do something like this. Or if I want to do it in the same manner I previously did, let's remove the, oops, it would be like that. And you press enter and it would terminate Excel. Now, has anyone caught? A difference here. There is one big difference in PowerShell. I don't get why Microsoft did this, um, considering DOS and command prompt and the way it's ingrained and people were familiar with it. But for whatever reason, Microsoft, in their finite wisdom, has made it that when you're specifying the name of the process through PowerShell, you do not include the .exe. So don't get caught on that one if you decide to use PowerShell, which is fine, but know that it's now you're just saying kill process Excel, kill process access, kill process, whatever it is you want. It's very simple. I will just quickly open up the PowerShell ISE and just demonstrate one or two elements of this. Most importantly is looking at how did I know that? How did I discover this? Well, if we use the ISC and we'll just run the command itself. So I'm going to use the get process. So that's just going to get me a full listing of all the processes. I'm formatting it as a table, blah, blah, blah. So we're just going to run it and it's going to go through here and pull out a listing of all the processes. I'm going to let that run for two seconds while it is. You're going to look at the next command here which is the one we use to terminate a process. We're using the dash name and then supplying it the name. So if we come back here, and it's still running. So as you can see, PowerShell is not as fast as DOS. But the name is this column here. It's the first column. And if you look at them, none of them have the .exe. So you, I just learned that if I want to close something, I have to use the name that is specified in this column and therefore I exclude the .exe, and it is like that for absolutely everything. So for whatever reason, Microsoft in PowerShell chose not to include it when they identify processes. So therefore, when we're using it in any capacity, we also have to omit it. So it's that simple. Um, the command is very straightforward. Once again, PowerShell is slow. We're pushing it out. If you look here, we're creating a shell, and then we're initiating a PowerShell command window. So we're actually initiating two quote unquote larger applications that need to run 
before the command can even be executed compared to shell or the APIs, which don't do that. They just send the command and it's run. Um, well, shell still has to initiate the, uh, as you see here, it's still in some instances going to initiate the command.exe, but it loads a lot faster than say a command create object shell and then issuing another PowerShell, which has to launch the PowerShell uh, command prompt. So there's two things going on versus one. So these are slower, okay? Um, so WMI, PowerShell are slower. API, Shell are faster. My preference, Shell, why? Because we don't have any overhead. We don't have to make declarations. We don't have to worry about bitness. We don't have any of that. It works, it works beautifully. Now, if you're someone that's intensely invested in PowerShell already, well, then this becomes an interesting approach to consider. But those would be my two options, Shell or PowerShell, but truly it's Shell. So I hope this has been informative and helps a few of you out there uh, sort of weigh your options. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, keep it simple, stupid, as they say, the KISS approach is the one to take once again, and Shell just makes sense. I provide you here the simplest approach, and if you need to get into delays, you can always go that route. Uh, as I showed here, you can do uh, the shell to get a listing and send it to clipboard, or if you just wanted to s visualize it and save you the hassle of even having to launch the command prompt, you could run a command such as that, which will open the command prompt window for you and we'll provide it there visually for you to see review. This can be good when you're trying to figure out what exe I need to call. So for Firefox, I'd be calling that, for instance. Um, MS access is MS access dot exe, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you're done, don't forget to close it down or it stays running there somewhere on your computer. But there you have it, exploring a couple different easy ways that you can use in VBA. This works in any VBA application. None of this is access specific. So Excel, Outlook, whatever program you need to run this in, and uh, that will terminate any process as long as you have the name of that process. I'm going to stop here. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for watching. As always, like, share, subscribe. It's the only way I can continue to make videos and have yourselves all a great day.